Coming back to the search is inherently extremely slow and if you've done the lab questions already given you may have got some idea that what happens in exponential complexity algorithm my algorithms still have exponential complexity can i do something about it uh, there's one trick which is possible fundamentally widely applied it's called as the alpha beta pruning where the term pruning is same as last time so you have a tree pruning you cut the tree that's what heuristics did the last time uniform cost search was exploring everything and if you observe what happened asa algorithm with this heuristic function came with a axe and pruned the tree only elliptical so it pruned out some things it pruned out things at the back so can i apply a similar pruning over here we did apply a pruning of the cutoff but that's a bad pruning that's a lossy pruning now i'll try to make a pruning which will be lossless okay now it's a synthetic game i cannot take realistic game i'm afraid so there's a limit of the realistic games that i can use so it's completely a synthetic game so i cannot show you the state of the game i cannot show you the actions so i'll just show you the max and the min nodes now what I do is with every node that I draw and I discover in a backtracking or a depth first search approach, I'll also say internally what does it expect. So as of now, this node expects values between minus infinity to infinity. It's its expectation. It has no expectation so far. Uh, let's go depth first search and let's expand the first node, which is a min node. And this min node also expects minus infinity to infinity. Now I am short of space, so let's say some complicated things happen about which I'll not be able to draw, but it gets a final utility value of let us say a plus five. Bingo. Now the expectation of this min is suddenly changed. And these are the new expectations. Why? Because it's taking min over everything. If something greater than 5 comes 6, it will not take. It's applying a min. If something less than 5 comes, it will still take. So I'm guaranteed that min, the worst it can get is 5. It will get something better for itself, which means worse for max. So let's go on. 10. Now, the expectations don't change. Expectations absolutely don't change. It's still expecting something less than 5. 3. Now, the expectation would change. Now, if everything is greater than 3, it will not take. If anything is less than 3, then it will take. 3 is the worst that it will settle for. And let's say 8. Okay, now let's go to what happens on this max. Max will take the, uh, of course, uh, when I explore everything up, I don't need to take the expectation because I know this exactly has three. There's no other values to expect or I can say I have the exact value of it, which is a three. I've done all the expansions. Now what happens around over here is for this max, it's exactly the other way around. Max is trying to maximize that means if everything, anything less than 3 will come, it will absolutely not take. However, if something greater than 3 comes, it will expect, it, it will take that up. Uh, backtracking again, let's go. It's a min. So now let's have something. So again, I write down another random number, which is a 8. Now, this min is, as a result of it, expecting something which is definitely less than 8. If it happens to be greater than 8, it'll just not take. It'll absolutely not take anything which is greater than 8. So it's expecting something which is extremely less. And look at it, what this max is expecting. This max is not interested in anything which is less than 3. 
So that is going to be absolutely interesting. Uh, let's expand that a little bit further. So this time I say this has a 2. So what this man is now expecting is something which is 2. So my answer to this 3, it's still not complete. It is definitely less than equal to 2. I'm guaranteed for that. Irrespective of what happens, my return of this tree is less than or equal to 2. Now look at this tree over here. It expects something greater than 3. All that this tree is doing is that it will get something. It could be minus infinity, minus 5, minus 10, minus 8, minus 4, 1, 2. But it's definitely not greater than 2. Which means I don't care about what happens around at all these branches. It just doesn't matter because the returns of this tree is less than or equal to 2. And this max node will not accept anything which is less than 3. And we say that these branches have undergone a pruning. It's lossless. It's absolutely lossless. So, believe me, that's a really interesting thing to do. That's pruning. You have chopped off branches not by more memory. You have chopped off branches not by any assumption. You naturally chopped off branches. So, and that's practically what makes in an absolute sense. We people as... Teaching stuff, evaluate the copies, I'm trying to find out how, how much the topper has scored from my own internal belief. I'm trying to find out how much the topper has kind of scored. I go to the first guy and he says that I know exactly how much I have written for, I know how you evaluate. I'll get a plus 80 on 100. I say, absolutely very good. Then I go to the second child and the second person, the second child, the second student says, you know what? I attempted well, question word 50 marks. Let me calculate how much will I get. Let me involve more depth for search. Let me apply more computation. And I'll say, dude, anything which is less than 80, I'm not interested. You believe you'll get less than 50 and not even talk to you. <laughs> Don't waste your time. So, you're not even in my probable list. So, don't waste your time. That's exactly what happened over here. The first child offered a 3. The second child said, I do not know. I offer you something which is less than 2. I say, not even interested. Uh, but then that's not the only child. So, let's do it for another one. And this time I say it's minus 3, which means I'm expecting from minus infinity to minus 3 around over here. Anything which is less than 3, Max is not interested. This is offering less than minus 3. Boom, not interested. So that's the first kind of pruning that I apply. Now, I could always invert it up. So, let's go another tree, this time rooted and min. It's not that it's rooted as min. The tree is huge and I'm only drawing a small part of the tree. So, it expects minus infinity to infinity. First child, max. Some huge computation process, it gives a plus 3, it gives, a, so it gives a plus 3. The moment it gives a plus 3, what do I do? I set my expectations correct. Yes, I got 3. I'll get something bigger than 3. Less than that, not interested. Less than that, not interested. Greater than that, interested. So I'll expect something greater than 5. 8, interested. Uh, there are no other branches, so in fact, I have my exact answer, which is a 8. But now what happens around over here at this min node? Now min, the worst it gets is a 8. That's my worst expectation is a 8. 
More than that, I'm not interested. I'm a min node. I minimize. Anything which is more than 8, I'm not even interested. Anything which is less than 8, I am interested. And therefore, now let's see what happens. The max node around over here, it gives a minus 3. That means the expectation is definitely greater than minus 3. 0. So, I mean, I'm interested in maximizing. So, it's a 0 that I'm interested in. And let's say a 10. So there's a 10. I'm definitely interested in 10. Now this means that I'm getting something which is greater than or equal to 10. And here I'm expecting something which is definitely less than 8. Problem. This min guy was like, I need the minimum number. I need to find out how much smaller the people will score. The first guy said 80. The second guy said, 100% correct answer that I know of is a uh, 95. I could be precise, maybe it's more than that, but it's 95 for sure. I'll be like, okay, dude, you're way over my league. Don't even think about it. And of course, this one, the first node is, let us say, a uh, 3. So I'm expecting definitely more than 3. This, uh, okay, this one will be pruned. Uh, the second one turns out to be a uh, 15. So I'm definitely expecting more than 15, but this guy wants something which is definitely less than 8. So it's not happening. Pruned. So this is also what we call as a pruning, and that's also what we call as the pruning. So that's the alpha and beta pruning, either applied on the max node or applied on the min node. So the first example was how on min you are pruning. So there's a min node and you're pruning based on whatever values you've got so far. The second one was on the max node. So on this max node, you are pruning whatever you have got so far. So 100% better results. No need to have any assumption, a clear case of value addition like the A star will got him the best thing. And therefore, let's apply this up. I use two terms, which is exactly the same terms that I was writing in bracket around over here, the alpha and the beta value. So as I go along into, so I'll not draw everything up. So these are the max nodes in a branch. So out of all these values that I've computed so far, I'll say alpha is equal to the best value of a max node in the current part. And similarly for the min value, so these are, that's my, in the same part, there are some min nodes. I'll not do all of them. So beta is the best value. Remember, alpha is trying to maximize itself. Beta is trying to minimize itself. One is on the max nodes. The other one is on the min nodes. So best value of a min node in the current part. Now I expect for my nodes, I expect that my values will always be between alpha and beta. If it's less than alpha, like in the first case, I'm not interested. If it's greater than beta, I'm not interested. So I'm only interested in value which are between alpha and beta. And that is the one check that I will always do. If it doesn't qualify to have that check, then I just prune that up. And let's apply a very small one line change of code to what I had on the max and the min values. 
So I'll additionally take in inputs as alpha and beta. I'll additionally take in inputs as alpha and beta. The initial value is, of course, a minus infinity plus infinity. In max, all that I'll do is I'll try to calculate whatever is the maximum value I have got so far. So alpha is max of the old value and the new value obtained. And similarly for beta, I'll try to calculate the minimum of the old value and the new value that I have. Now let's add in the pruning conditions over here. How will I prune? I'll just prune by returning whatever value by saying the other values absolutely don't matter. So I'll say if my current value exceeds the limit, then I don't wait for the other iterations of the loop. I don't wait for the other actions. I don't wait for the other back actions. I just return a V. And similarly over here, then I don't wait for anything else. I simply return the value that I have so far. Okay, so this is the same code with a alpha beta value and this code can double the depth by which you search. Now remember it's a game. If you are slow and you can only see three moves ahead, your opponent is fast and can see six moves ahead, your opponent is goddamn much smarter than you. So, if I say that now the game instead of 4 will be able to look at 8 depths ahead, it's a terribly better program. It has a significantly better foresight. Of course, it will still not be able to look at the complete game tree. The complete game tree is exponential. It's not happening whatever you do. However, what I've done is that I'll be able to see more ahead and because I'll be able to see more ahead, it's definitely a much better algorithm. Now, let's quickly come back and see what happened around over here. So if you look at it, I did two expansions and then pruned. I only did one expansion and then pruned. Is there a reason? Similarly for the other case, I did three expansions and pruned. I did only two expansions and pruned. Is there a trick? Yes, there is a trick. Here, min first selected best looking action. So, if you have eight actions possible, tic-tac-toe, you have nine actions possible, which one do you apply first? Which one do you apply second? Nine factorial actions possible, that's up to you. But in alpha beta pruning, what happens is, select the good ones first. How do you know good ones? By the guess function, by heuristics, by game logic. It's just a guess. It's not that if you do it the other way around, you'll get wrong answer. But if you apply the best action first, you'll prune it immediately. So ordering of action, which was immaterial in the A star algorithm, has the highest value now. You select the best action first and goddamn, after one step, you have pruned everything else for nodes which are not good. No assumption made. So this is what's called as the ordering problem. The ordering action problem. And my solution goes about, you always take the most promising looking action. Nobody knows which is the best action. If there was one such thing, we wouldn't have been doing an entire search. Nobody knows what is the best action possible. However, you can make a guess to prune early. 
You can make a guess to prune early and if you make the correct guess, in order to prune early, you get more better results in terms of more branching being pruned or as we say the effective branching factor. So the complexity of algorithm is branching, effective branching factor raised to power the depth. So I need to reduce the effective branching factor. So the effective branching factor, it reduces by a root, which is significantly smaller. And because it's significantly smaller, it has a much better returns. Now, there's a noisy pruning, of course, as well, which is possible. It's noisy, it's dependent upon the game, it's heuristic, it's gay, so I'll not say that but if you play a game of chess if you play a game of checkers if you play all these games you are already doing it without me telling you which is you consider all the cases however you only expand k best moves uh, remember you have made a bad guess the optimal answer may not be in these k moves but you said I only expand k nodes and this k also could not be, will not be fixed. It will be variable. So basically you say that there's a probability function which says that what is the probability of winning from this state action pair or there's a utility function of the expected returns of the state action pair. Based on that, you clearly classify these are good, these are bad moves. You only expand for the good moves. Later on, the bad moves may turn out to be good. You may be at a loss, but it helps control your effective branching factor. And that has a lot of utility into the working of the algorithm. That's all that you have to do. So the entire volume is fixed. You want a high depth, that means sometimes you need to cut on the breadth by heuristically neglecting nodes. Uh, this one is also called as a forward pruning, where you just look at things and you say that, okay, let me just cut it out in order to control the effective branching factor.